Welcome to Kick Scammers, the show where we look at the absolute worst indie go gos, the downright scummiest GoFundMe's, and of course, the most baffling Kickstarters to ever grace the crowdfunding platforms. And today, boy oh boy, do we have one stupid story to tell. If you go make your way over to Google and search for Kickstarter and Anime Tube, you will be greeted with the following takedown notice by Your Media LLC due to the campaign apparently using copyrighted material of the Naruto kind. Of the Naruto kind. Of the Naruto kind. And let me tell you guys that this is far from one of those one image takedown request things that you often find on Kickstarter. The rabbit hole with Anime Tube goes a hell of a lot deeper than this one anime. No, seriously. I can't believe it! Anime Tube, as the title suggests, was designed to offer up a streaming service not too dissimilar to Netflix, Amazon Prime, and Disney Plus. But on top of that, as the title suggests, it would be entirely focused on anime content, which in itself isn't too dissimilar from Funimation, VRV, or most famously, as the campaign video itself takes a stab at, Crunchyroll. Or at least I think they're taking a stab at Crunchyroll here. Uh, but confusing quips aside, on top of all of that, this service would also provide you with a hot AI waifu that can interact directly with you as you connect to your friends, chat with like-minded people around the world, and best of all, it's all free. <laughs> of course, this is all way too good to be true as you already know of it being hit with a copyright strike, but the real question is, how did this all happen? Well, that's what we're here to find out today in Kickstarter's failed anime tube streaming service. Welcome to Slope's Game Room. But before going ahead, just a quick message to let you guys all know that you should be following me on Twitch or on Slope Extra. Your choice, because this Thursday coming, we will be playing Spin Masters on Antstream. Or to be more specific, the Spin Master Challenge, Mine All Mine. You can sign up to Antstream for free using my link below. You can even play the game for free. And this Thursday, like I said, I will be playing the game trying to beat all of your guys' scores. If anyone out there does manage to beat me and they follow me on the platform, the very top of the leaderboard will be sent an I Beat DJ Slope pin badge anywhere in the world directly from me. And like I said, if you use that link below, you can sign up for free and take on DJ Slope. Anyway, enough of all that. Thanks, Anstream, for supporting in the show and the live streams but right now let's get back into the video On the 6th of July 2021, Anime Tube launched its crowdfunded campaign. It was asking for $50,000 and it got itself $101,075 when 938 backers backed it and managed to do all of that in a shade over 48 hours. In fact, according to the campaign owners themselves, they reached their goal in only 1 hour and 56 minutes. The buzz was real. Anime Tube was getting a hell of a lot of attention online. Obviously, most of that attention was negative attention. But still, it's because of all of that negative attention that more people got to see the campaign, which obviously resulted in it being a success. A free streaming service that would be filled with ads, or no ads for paying customers, that will provide a multi-genre search with built-in chat and a whopping 19 pages of titles that you can expect to see from the service. Iconic movies such as Akira, Appleseed, I mean, pretty much everything. Bleach, Sailor Moon, Digimon, Dragon Ball, Attack on Titan, Afro Samurai, Naruto, One Piece, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh! And of course, a crap ton of other anime shows that someone like me wouldn't even know exists. Because I'm not a weeb. Kawaii! Now, of course, with this campaign having pretty much every single campaign under the sun, it grabbed the attention of well, everyone. And even Kickstarter themselves gave it their official stamp of approval by calling it a Kickstarter we love. 
But for every single person out there that got wind of this particular campaign, alarm bells were ringing by the anime-obsessed fans over on Twitter. One user brought up that Candy Candy was a definite no due to the rights for that show being held up in lawsuit hell, even in Japan. Another user who owned several of the licenses for shows in this list reached out to all of the big companies like Toei Animation, Viz, Sentai and of course Ghibli asking if they were in talks with the company because he definitely wasn't. The more the bigwigs started to shout out about the absurdity of this campaign, the more dedicated among them started to look into the company's history and their Discord server. Something wasn't quite right, obviously. Unlike all streaming services, this company was looking to provide all of these titles to a worldwide audience with no regional restrictions, and they would be doing all of this in an app that you would need to download. Are you piecing all of this together yourself yet? Yes, this isn't a Netflix service that they're trying to make. They're trying to make a Cody-like service, which actually is something they have done in the past. But before going ahead, for those that don't know, the way applications such as Cody works is... Okay, well, it is actually the same as Netflix on the surface. You browse shows, you press play, and voila. The difference is, Netflix is full of shows that either they have produced, for better or worse, or they've got the legal rights to run on their streaming platform in whatever particular region you would be watching. Seriously, in my opinion, iBoy is one of the worst things on Netflix. Boy gets shot through his iPhone into his brain, and now because he's got chunks of iPhone in his brain, he can control the internet. Or oh, watchdog style, it's, it's so bad. A special kid, Tom. A special kid. Cody, on the other hand, and many others like it, are essentially a media player search engine that finds already uploaded, for the most part illegally, TV shows and movies on external websites and simply plays them for you. Sometimes you would get lucky with the site or service that would offer these shows, but more often than not, you're going to be grabbing yourself a virus from the absurd amount of adverts found within these sites, or you're going to have to watch your imported episodes of Sonic X in 10-minute segments in nothing but potato-perfect quality. Is it illegal? No, it's frowned upon, but technically it's actually not storing any of this footage. Instead, it's just playing the footage from an external website that they have nothing to do with. I mean, is it Sony's fault that you're playing pirated DVDs that you've bought off someone at a boot fair on the Sony PlayStation 2? Of course not. But then again, the PlayStation 2 isn't showing you where to get those bootlegs for free whilst earning money from sponsored advertisements at the same time, is it? You get the idea. All of a sudden, that massive list of movies and shows becomes a lot more realistic because, like I said, they're not actually owning the rights to any of these shows. And it became even more interesting when Twitter followers discovered that the company also shared the same address as another company called Eon Enterprises. A company that provides these exact Cody-like services, such as Cartoons Unlimited, which is obviously for cartoons, GameCube, which is essentially a Let's Play directory of tubers like Markiplier, PewDiePie and Stampy Cat, Comics Unlimited was for illegally uploaded comics of course, and Cinebox was for the movie lovers out there. But on top of that, one app they released several times over was AnimeTube. You had AnimeTube Unlimited, AnimeTube Pro, and AnimeTube Universal. Why so many? Because it was so goddamn popular. It was available free on your Xbox, as well as a PC, of course. And even though the legality of all of this is a bit... Yeah, Microsoft obviously didn't like it, and they kept taking it down. Now, let's just make a few things clear here. People out there that are watching this, you're going to come to your own opinions on a service like AnimeTube. Is it actually any different to services like Crunchyroll? <laughs> well, obviously it is now, but back in the day, not so much. 
Venture Beats actually put out an article back in 2007 that really does show us what the service was like back then, bringing together anime fans from all around the world by actually hosting anime the same way as Anime Tube originally did, and some of that anime was dubbed by the fans, and Crunchyroll obviously made a profit by living off donations from those fans. Eventually they moved into the realm of properly licensed shows, but still, these were the company's beginnings, along with quite a few others in this space. Look, it is what it is. At the end of the day, if it worked for Crunchyroll, why can't it work for AnimeTube, right? As already stated, AnimeTube back in 2017 was a service with at least three apps that had over 65,000 ratings, bringing them up to a 4.5 out of 5 rating score that lasted for quite some time. No one knows for sure exactly when this service was pulled from the Microsoft Store, but it is believed to be around June to July of 2020, after finding a troubled teen who was no longer able to download it on his Xbox after his brother deleted it. <laughs> This is the people going. This is the. This is going out to the people at Microsoft. This is my Xbox One. What you did to it is unforgivable. You got rid of Anime Two, my bro, my boy. You got rid of my baby Anime Two. I can't watch anime because I gotta pay monthly shit. I was having free anime. The big problem for the company was that even though they had 65,000 mostly positive reviews, the name Eon Enterprises by this point was a tarnished name by the people that actually mattered. The big wigs up top. Ain't nobody going to be downloading your application if you can't put it on the App Store, right? Exactly. And it's because of this that the company started afresh by simply starting a new company. And that company was Gameface LLC, a mobile application development studio with over 10 years of mobile application development experience. We've produced a dozen mobile applications on the Windows 10 and Xbox One platform with an average rating of 4.7 out of 5 stars. Yeah, unsurprisingly, you've got no mention of what actually those older app services actually are, have you? Oh no, wait, what's this? Soundhead? Oh, yet another search engine that literally scours places like YouTube for the music that you want to listen to, showing you their adverts above and below said videos, so obviously they make a bit of profit. Oh, would you look at that? It also provides radio stations and police scanners? Really? So anyway, with this new company in hand at the same address, they went ahead and made their first Kickstarter, and they asked for $280,000 on that first Kickstarter. They got it to about $63,000, and only a few days later, they cancelled their own campaign. Why? Well, they obviously weren't going to ever hit that lofty, albeit unrealistic goal, and on top of that, they were no doubt not all that happy with the hatred that they were getting online for using artwork from licensed shows in the campaign. But whatever, they cancelled it, Kickstarter themselves also removed it out of sight too due to that Naruto copyright claim as stated at the beginning of this episode, which leads us to Kickstarter number two. On July 6th, they changed that extremely low yet unachievable goal of $280,000 and instead was only asking for $50,000. And the team even reached out to Meriwether Comics, a very popular group that had a lot of followers, to do a little bit of promo work, which, of course, can be found on the campaign itself. Yep, $50,000. That's less than 20% of the original goal and they were offering you more bang for your buck. Obviously, the hate came in fast. But confusingly, not before Kickstarter themselves gave this project the infamous Projects We Love badge. That long list of shows that the company was apparently in talks of getting, but obviously wasn't, turned out to be nothing more than simply AnimeTube reaching out to people via DM or LinkedIn. What? This was their in discussion, just literally sending an email or a DM to a company and well, them not even replying. That was their in discussion with these companies. It's worthless. I mean, with that in mind, I must be in contact with hundreds, if not thousands, of genital enlargement cream companies, <laughs> which I'm not. <laughs> A 
actually, when looking at the Discord itself, it turns out that pretty much every single anime suggested made it on the list. These guys literally said yes to everything that was suggested. Of course, the massive list of streaming services that would host the app for only $50,000 off the fees was just simply absurd. The price list of paid versions is literally nothing more than made up numbers. I mean, come on. You're going to be providing approximately double the amount of anime shows that Funimation, Crunchyroll, and Netflix have combined for $6 a month. <laughs> yeah, all right. That waifu AI assistant that would advise you on the shows to watch and give you insights into the world of anime ended up being a stretch goal. In fact, that was always the case, as was the chat feature. News started to spread that obviously $50,000 wasn't anywhere near enough, which led Anime Tube themselves to state that they will need more money teasing an Indiegogo campaign, my guess with a flexibly funded goal, and multiple future Kickstarters. The studio had literally no clue what they were doing when it came to licensing shows for streaming platforms, stating multiple times that it actually didn't cost all that much money at all. It was all just fake news. Now, just to be clear here, guys, I don't know how much this sort of stuff costs either, but that's exactly why I'm not trying to run a no axis or an anime tube myself. But I think we can all agree 5,000 animes, some of which are actually exclusive to Netflix and Crunchyroll and God knows wherever else, you're definitely not going to be getting all of that for only $10,000. Wait, what? I hear you cry? I thought you said this campaign was for $50,000. That's right, but $40,000 of that was going to be going on the development, which obviously leaves only $10,000 after Kickstarter and transactional fees for all of this. Merryweather saw the error of their ways and pulled out from any kind of collaboration with this company, which, let's be honest, was actually the main draw for clued-up anime fans, offering refunds to those that didn't get one directly from Kickstarter or the campaign owners themselves, which eventually led to Kickstarter again suspending the project, and even though Game Face claimed that they wouldn't stop, it looks like they have stopped. After a load of serious kicking off on the private Discord that they had already been booting random backers for asking just general questions, they deleted said Discord, their own website, their Twitter, and their Facebook is as good as abandoned. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the story of Anime Tube. Stupid, stupid, stupid Anime Tube. Or are they? This sort of thing happens more often than you may think. Of course, Anime Tube was one of the higher profile cases in the field, and thankfully it is because of that that Kickstarter themselves saw the project for what it was. A scam, intentional or not, that was likely to top a million dollars only after people reached out to them. Because let's face it, Kickstarter gave this a project we love stamp of approval. <laughs> Look guys, I've said this a thousand times, I actually do like Kickstarter, I use the service quite a lot, it's definitely the better of two evils I suppose as well. But beneath all of those awesome projects that I have been lucky enough to be a part of, Scammers got a scam, and it's down to us to shout out when something like this happens. Due to this company already having the established fan base from that previous Kickstarter, endless amounts of popular IPs wrongfully slapped all over their wish list, the support of Kickstarter themselves, and most importantly, a vision to fight back against the evil big guys like Netflix and Crunchyroll. This was a service for you. Let's fight against the corporations, down with men in suits in big offices who refuse to give us the shows that we love in our regions. Let's put our money where our mouths are and support a company looking out for us, the small guys. What? What does this even mean? People love to shout out against the man, these big corporations. And yes, let's be honest with ourselves here, guys. There's a lot behind the scenes at places like Netflix that definitely needs to be improved. But also, if they were able to get hold of 5,000 shows and put it into their directory and put it into all regions, do you not think they would do that exact thing? Of course they bloody would, but for endless amounts of reasons regarding licensing and more importantly, the actual cost of something this enormous, it's never gonna happen for them and it most definitely is never gonna happen for a service like Anime Tube. No matter how much they get their troops behind them spouting whatever rant they need to to ruffle the feathers of small-minded individuals who think that every single big organization are out there to get them, at the end of the day, like it or not, a small 50k company 
company isn't going to even come close to competing with companies like Netflix and Crunchyroll. Seriously, if there ever was a better example of a ridiculous idea followed up by absolutely no experience, then honestly, I'd struggle to find it. In short, sending someone a DM that they do not see and almost certainly do not reply to is not you in talks with anime owners. It's literally nothing. Sure, it's an idea, an idea that enough people liked, and some of those ideas actually brought to the table were actually pretty good within the anime world, and some of those legit services suggested here could actually benefit the big guys. But at the end of the day, it's quite literally the perfect definition of a pipe dream, and that is all it ever was. Hey there guys, thanks for checking out the video. The first kick scammer of 2022. Thank you all for your long time support. I've got plenty more kick scammers coming up. Uh, I'm working on another complete history for the following weekend. I'm gonna try and do one each a piece as we move forward into 2022. But yeah, thank you all so, so much for your support. With an extra big shout out, going to all my Patrons and YouTube members that supported me throughout 2021. With an extra big shout out, going to all of these awesome people. 8 game 8 bit gamer 88 Aaron Gorman Agro Crag a um aka Akatimo 84 mess that up Andrew Dalton Arista Benjamin Guy Big Rico Bram Perez Cheshire One Chris the Shapeshifter Chris Walker Christopher Devero Clan Bob Conrad Constantine De Action Saxon Dalton Chevmatic Daniel Torres uh Dina Dina 81 Digsy B Game Apologist Gary Pinkett Ian Quell Intrigued Gaming Jay is Manchild Jabba Al Aiden James Jeff Mianowski Jeremy ba uh, Baiwa Beaver, Jeremy Beaver, I remember your message. Jeremy Rodriguez, Josh Gibbons, King Link Reviews, King of Carrot Flower, Lucas Oftel, Luke Jorginson, Man of God 9000, Man Shovel, Matt Jackson, Michael Ridley Dash, Mike Fallon, Mind of the Unsane, Nicholas Burtner, Nick Pollard, Over Giles Zane, Roll VP, uh, Ray Blair, Ray Tra Retro to Next Gen, aka Lou, Richard Alderjik, Roven Army, Ryan Holtz, Sir Nilsson? Sir Nielsen, Shade Silence, Shadow Dragon, Solid's Captor, Steven, Taylor Rainwater, That Gamer, The Cunning Linguist, The Sneaky Ferret, Tim Lunn, Todd Paul Float G, Vitas Varnes, Vikeko, Wobbles and Bean, The Wonder Ducks, and Ye Old Hamburglar. Like I said, guys, all of these awesome people allow me to continue making this awesome show, so thank you all so, so much, and all everyone that supports me, no matter how you do it, whether you share my content on social media or on Reddit or wherever it is, Thank you so, so much. I have some massive plans for 2022 and I really do hope you uh, are sticking around and enjoying the show. So until next time, guys, this is DJ Slope signing out and hopefully I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.